Most of you are probably going to be aware of Steam Engine Simulator, made by Ange the Great. It's a very simple little game, and when I was looking at Ange the Great himself making it in his videos, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. But I didn't really feel an urge to play it because he kind of showed everything in the game and I never actually tried it out myself. And then I was perusing through Steam and then Steam showed Steam, the Steam Engine Simulator game. And I was like, you know what? I want to try this out. And then I'm going to try to put it into a Beam and G car, but lazily. I'm not, I'm not going to go fully technical because I don't want to have to deal with all of the engine heating up and getting the water levels. I, we're not going to do that. We're just going to have a little bit of fun. This is also my first time playing this, so I don't actually know how to do. Oh, OK, so I can offset it that way. Turn the heat up and temperature is going up. Is there water in? How do I? Ugh. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, I go side to side, all right. Let's fill it up so then it doesn't... Oh, okay, I, I circulate it. Let's turn the water down or off, I don't actually know. Now let's turn the heat all the way up, I believe, which I'm not sure how much pressure I want. I think it's like over a hundred, not sure. There we go, 100 degrees. The water should be boiling now, or at least it would be boiling, except we're in a, uh, a compressed area here. I'm gonna turn that down, then turn the throttle up. Damn it, I keep mouse wheeling. All right, let's open up the throttle, release the brake. How do I do that? Oh, it is off, okay. Well, that works. Woo, yeah. Let's turn throttle all the way up. You're not gonna start spinning, are you? Oh, it's a starter motor. I forgot about that functionality. Okay, pressure is going down. Let's turn that back up. Get some heat into this thing. And there we go. Oh, okay, you know what? That's, that's difficult. Let's turn that throttle back down. We've got to get to a balance because we're going to have to record all of these audio bits like 100 RPM by 100 RPM. This is gonna be tricky, very, very tricky. In fact, with the fact that I'm struggling now to actually set this up, I'm gonna struggle to record this. This is gonna be not easy at all. Okay, yep, and there we go. Turn heat up maybe? Jesus. This is going to be problematic at the least. Now, if I put the brake on, Okay. There is no sound change between it being free spinning or engine brake on. Okay, so there's a little bit of a, a trick for me because, can I pause it? No, I can't pause this, can I? I? I have to turn the throttle off. Nope, wrong way, there we go. Usually when there's an engine in BeamNG, it'll have audio for like power on and engine at the RPM where there's no power on, so like no throttle. And those sounds are usually very, very different. This on the other hand is not exactly like a normal thing where the power coming out to make the sound is not dependent on the throttle but it's always going to be a constant for its RPM. I believe that's generally how it works. But then again, if there is more strain on the engine of the RPM, more air should be going in, so it'll have a different pitch, or no, different amplitude added. I, I don't know how this, it didn't sound like it was different with the brake on or off, so we'll just go with that. Oh dear, oh, pressure's gone all the way up, let's. Let some of that pressure out. Okay. Uh, now, where do I ex- where's the export button? Hey Ange, where's the export button for BeamNG? Yeah, I wasn't planning to do a BeamNG exporter, to be honest, but uh, maybe one day. Probably not for a while, though. Well, I suppose it's manual then? Because I don't know any other way to grab audio. I'm gonna have to use OBS. And I'm gonna have to grab it at each individual RPM, so that's gonna make life a lot more fun. Make sure that my audio is recording to different tracks. Then, okay, the first thing we're gonna need to do is grab a starter motor sound, probably. I don't actually know how to do the starter motor sound. So, throttle set to zero, what does it sound like? Okay, let's undo the brake, then starter.
Hmm. That makes life tricky. So what's happening there is it's increasing with pitch compared to the engine speed. I don't know if BeamNG does that for the starter motor sounds. It's not recording. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get that heat back up. We'll leave it somewhere around here. What we're gonna aim for is about, how do I, nope. Uh, yeah, there we go, right click. Uh, we're gonna aim for about 50 to 100 RPM. And it seems that the max is 309 RPM. Okay, it's so gonna be a very low revving engine. Meaning the gearing is going to need, need that's a lot of gearing. Let's open up the throttle. And, oh, it starts on its own, nice. And, oh, I get to do it without the starter. That's cool. Okay, we'll record a little bit of this. It's, uh, it's about, what is that, 60? And it's slowly increasing on its own. That's, that's helpful. You know what, let's get it to 100 now. Oh, that's, it's quite tricky. There we go. There's 100. It's losing a little bit of speed. But I think we're good, all right, let's pause. Get it up to 150 now, and unpause. We'll record a little bit. We don't need to record a lot. Then re-pause, and now we're gonna get up to 200 RPM. There's a lot of work involved with this. Several bad puns later. Now, let's record a little bit of horn. Okay, that should be all we need. Now I have the fun job of Cutting everything down individually by hand. Yay! Now, I could just edit this in some sort of audio thing, but I need DaVinci Resolve because it also shows me the video so I know what RPM we're doing. Let's start with a starter motor. Yep. So, we probably don't need to grab a whole lot, probably something like that. Drag you like... Actually, I don't know how this is gonna work. Grab you like that. And perfect. Okay, that is going to be starter steam. Yep, I'm gonna have to do this all manually every single time. I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna skip to the end because I'm pretty sure you don't wanna hear all this. And with all of them named, now we make ourselves a new mod. God, what am I gonna put this in? Something like maybe the burn side? So like burn water? Kind of what's happening, if you don't think about it. Vehicles, but also now art. So then it can call upon this stuff. Now I have to remember how the file structure for this works and I don't think I remember. Let's open an automation file. Under art, we have sound. Then inside of there, we have blends and engine. Inside of the blends, we have our blend file. Steaming pile. You know, because I've made this and there is way too many things in here. So let's go, you know what? We only need one for now. And this is going to be an exact replica. So that, somebody at the door. Oh, 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 I know what this is. You know what? No, we'll leave that for another day. That is a, a whole video in and of itself. And another one. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that box was maybe a little bit too small. I'm excited for that though. Then we'll go back in here, we'll go into here, create a new folder with that. Then in there is where we'll have our audio. We'll just quickly grab all of you. I don't know about the starter motor stuff. We'll figure that out later. There we go. All engine sounds are in. Grab the name. Oh wait, do these have to be WAVs? God damn it. Then let's grab the name, plop it in there, and then duplicate this a bunch of times. Copy you and that'll also be here for the like off power section. I think that is all good. Up next, I gotta go into the vehicles folder, make ourselves the burn side, and we'll grab ourselves an engine. Doesn't matter. Change the name of that to something like steam. I don't know if we need, but well, we need engine mounts. Intake, I don't think really much of this matters. Let's just Delete everything that's not the stock stuff. These are all, oh, this is this is actually gonna be quite terrible, but I just wanna show you the main thing to start with, which is sound config, sample name. We're gonna be grabbing our own thing. Art, sounds, blends, 
There we go. This is what we'll need to grab. Uh, as for all of these changes, I don't know. We'll see. Let's open up Boom and G. And for the engine... Damn it, it's not here. Wait, no, it probably is. I just stuffed up. Now it should be here, steam engine. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that is so cool. Except one little thing. I'm having to not talk. Yep, I've got the audio turned all the way down. So. <laughs> it's sounding weird. The faster we go, that's because we're at like 2,000 RPM here. And the highest we recorded was like a 625. So, time to change things up a little bit, methinks. At zero RPM, I think we'll have like five Newton meters of torque. And unfortunately, there is no like dyno output for this. So I don't think there's anything I can do to gain value. So we're gonna have to make them up. Let's have a look at some real steam graphs. Uh, steam engine efficiency? The, I don't think that's what we want. We'll call this 50 RPM. Oh dear, okay, yep. And then the amount of power there, let's say at max power, this thing's probably gonna produce about, hmm, actually I don't know. Let's say a thousand Newton meters, maybe? That's a lot, I know, but stick with me. And that'll be at like 180 RPM. But at 50, let's say, you know what, let's, let's keep it even at a, a thousand. It'll drop off as we go. Then at 300 RPM, we'll drop this down to like 500. And because it doesn't like drop off a cliff, it kind of tapers away a little bit. We'll make the 600 RPM go to like 50 Newton meters. We'll see how that works. Idle RPM is going to be zero. Hopefully that will work. I don't know if it does, but we'll try it. Oh, actually, you know what? No, 50 RPM is going to be the idle. My bad. We'll have to use the starter to get it to that 50 though. Max RPM is going to be like seven... You know what, let's go low 450 RPM. After that, it'll start to damage itself. That is not an RPM limiter, by the way. That is the maximum RPM that the engine can withstand, I believe. Inertia will turn up as well. That'll be like three, I don't know. Make it a lot. Let's break out a UI app and refresh. What do we get? Okay. It's not letting us idle really low though. Weird things are happening. There we go, idle roughness. I want this idle roughness to be zero at the moment, just to make it be consistent. 36 RPM, okay. Audio does not change at all. Oh, I know what I did wrong, I'm so dumb. Here's the RPM targets. Oh, that has to be 50 RPM, that has to be 100, that's 150 RPM. I completely forgot about this, and this is something I forgot last time as well, because I'm an idiot. I also won't let it idle at zero. Now, I could set this up to be a uh, electric motor to run at zero RPM. The problem with running at zero RPM, sorry, the problem with running as an electric motor so then it can reach that zero RPM idle state is the fact that uh, it won't let out any exhaust gases, which is something I want to play with in a bit. Oh, you know what? I could probably set up a particle emitter to be based upon the engine RPM. Okay, you know what? We might switch to electric. Uh, no idle RPM called and electric motors. Okay, perfect. Let's grab that electric motor code and stick it there. I wonder if the, you know what? It's still gonna call upon gasoline. I wonder if that's gonna throw an error. Probably will, but let's try. Yep, okay. Fuel tank, no worky do. Grab the main battery code and I'm gonna call this steam battery just to make things easier. Then under main engine, there should be a fuel type. There we go, energy storage, main tank, and required energy is going to be electrical energy. Oh, it's in a temp area. Let's go into the burn water and put it in there. Now, steam tank, perfect. Good, okay, we have charge. Nice. Except it like readily revs way too easily. 130 friction. 
224. Okay, that's that's revving up like what we would hope. That's good. And then it doesn't really want to go beyond 300, which is also what we want. We'll have it like if we run down hit, it'll, it'll go over and we have the RPM sounds. Letting it go. Okay, we need more friction. All right, we'll clutch in first gear, let off clutch, and it basically stalls. But then it moves away. 300 RPM, shift gears. Okay, we really need to do something about the <laughs> gear ratios. I'm not going to do a final drive. May as well just leave the same diff in. And it's working. No horn yet. As you can see, it's just a normal horn. But yeah, 13 kilometers an hour. Fantastic. <sighs> so. This has been a real hassle. There's lots of little nuances to BMNG that I've come up against that I have never seen before. One of which, there's like a natural unevenness of engine RPM, which at a normal RPM of like 600 for an idle is fine. Get it down to 50 and the variance is going to be the entire, um, uh, engines just don't like to do really low RPM. Also, there seems to be some sort of weird clutch thing where clutches don't like to work below a certain RPM properly as well. Like, it's like there's a minimum amount of time a clutch needs to ride over an RPM to get into the gear fully. But that is longer than the amount of RPM that we've got for this engine. So I just couldn't get it to work. I'm trying to make BMNG just do things it doesn't want to do. But even then, when I had a really long diff ratio, for some reason it would just cause the whole vehicle to just jiggle. It was very peculiar, and it also always activated audio, but also very inconsistently. <laughs> I even went to the point of trying to write a custom controller. No luck. But finally, what I've been working on this last while is getting the particle emitters to work. And I kept on pushing back and forth at this, like going, oh, okay, we'll do this. And then, no, I won't. And then I will. And then I'm like, <clears throat> particle emitters are annoying. I'm going to be honest. I've done so much work and I still fully don't know how it works. But hey, this is my results. Perfect. Let's lift up the back end here. And we can see the amount of smoke we got. And if we increase the RPM, it's a lot more smoke. Air speed indicator. Obviously it has to be this one, then we can do knots to kilometers later. And let's see what our steam powered vehicle could do. Because that's one of the things that would have been loved to have known by the greater audience. Oh boy, I have to really, I have to get the sim rig out for this. There's, there's no question, but I'm probably going to do that tomorrow. And I might get somebody in to have a look. That is a lot of exhaust. I wonder if I should actually invert it. So then the steam doesn't like trail off quite so far. I think that might be the smarter option here. Okay. It looks like going about 72 knots and it's maxed out 129 72 knots 133 kilometers an hour here you go Ange. what do you think all right to uh, start with. it's smoky yeah well it's, uh... unfortunately i couldn't have less smoke and i don't know how i don't i don't understand how the particle emitters work but i was able to get it to this point one is steam and the other one is the uh the burning side interesting yeah i mean on a normal car it would kind of look like there's a coolant leak on the left side because <laughs> because that that doesn't look good i mean the, the right side also doesn't look good they both don't look good is what i'm saying i don't know how to change the particle i tried to make there be less particles but it just wouldn't let me but anyway uh -huh. here's the sound i mean yeah that's steam engine simulator that's for sure yep and now I know that it's not really meant for export, but I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it's it sounds better than I was expecting. Yeah, I, I do like the acceleration sounds. I'm pretty sure this is the fastest that Steam Engine Simulator has ever been, probably. 
Uh, it only goes up to 300 RPM. It's got massive gearing. Like, huge yeah. gearing on the uh, final drive ratio. What did you do for the, uh, like, the torque curve? Uh, lots. Now, okay. I had a bit of a look online, and it seems that the torque curve starts, like, massive and then drops off. And kind of like a bit yeah, of an S-curve. So, that's what I set up. I think it's like, uh, this will tell us. It is just shy of 10,000 Newton meters of torque. Yeah, that's that's pretty serious. I mean, it'd have to be a fairly big one, yes, but steam engines do have a lot of torque by uh, what I have been told. They, yeah, they, they definitely do. And uh, running a gearbox with an electric motor is a problem. So I couldn't really do that. Right. So everything is kind of like <laughs> shit. It's it, it's shit, <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> You, you've started yeah, to peel back the onion layers of copium that I've applied to this. It, it just, it sounds like no car I've ever heard before. Oh, it's fantastic. I love it. But hey, did you know that I don't have 100,000 subscribers yet? Well, actually, that's my goal for the end of the year. So if, if you're not, hey, maybe consider that, please. Here we are at Lasagna Seek, huh? And no gears, just drive and brake. It's not going to be a great one, is it? Oh, wait, yeah. No acceleration. Just takes off. Oh, that is a cool sound. I'm loving it. I, I have to remember, no change of gears. I'm not used to driving even electric vehicles. Oh, okay, lots of understeer. Get it slowed down. Turned in. And... Get that dual piston sound. And out we come. I, I do kind of want to fix that lower speed sound problem we have. Come on, turn. Go, 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 go. There we go. Alrighty. Getting up to about 100 kilometers an hour. It's not going to be the fastest vehicle. Accelerate out. Yeah, fully sick. No, he's got too much speed. He's gone off onto the sand. I'm an idiot. Anyway, coming up here. Break nice and early because this is not going to be a great turn in. Come on, go, 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 go. Pressure on the exit. Good. Okay. This one's going to be a little bit tricky because I could take this a little bit faster and cut as much as I want. I'm guessing this is going to probably be faster than the Toyota 86. No, it's not going to be faster than the Toyota 86. It's going to be slower than the Toyota 86, but it'd be funny if it was. <laughs> All right, braking. Here we go. Turn in. And... Oh, understeer. Oh, oh. Some may say a boatload of understeer. Power out. There we go. Come up to the braking zone. The penultimate. Turn! You fat tub of lard. Oh, goodness. I'm guessing from the outside, those tires are like rolling underneath the car, like entirely. Just the amount of sidewall. Oh, brake fade. Oh, little bit of burnout on the exit. But here we go. Down to the finish line. I think, actually, we're only going to be slightly slower than the Toyota 86, which is embarrassing. But there you go. A 231. Uh, okay. No, no, that's actually only a... Yeah, okay. We're faster than the 86 considerably. But that's the 2.5 litre, not the 2 litre that I have. Well, there you have it. This has, like, been something I've been thinking about for a while. One of the reasons why I didn't really want to do this is because of the particle emitters. And now that I have done it, I know why. Particle emitters suck. Getting that set up was just such a pain in the butt. And then to not be able to get it to work the way I wanted to was also very sucky. I, I think I could make a custom particle emitter. I tried to get exhaust to work, but for some reason it was never what I expected it to be. 
there's got to be some sort of trick to it that I just don't know. But the one thing I do know is that I love my channel members. For everyone else, though, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.